Last week, I wrote, shot, edited, and uploaded the first episode of 616 Wrestling all in one day in a matter of hours. I was hit with a wave of creativity the likes of which is rarely seen in professional wrestling commentary. In a scene full of anger and finger pointing and screeching, I went the opposite direction. Full on stupidity. I blame Punk for things that he had nothing to do with. 9-11, CM Punk. But today, I'm ready to turn over a new leaf. It's time to get serious on 616 Wrestling. Dead serious. So I wrote a bunch of jokes centered around that time that Vince McMahon was an explosion live on an episode of Monday Night Raw. Every video here on 616 Entertainment is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoyed the show here today, consider signing up. You'll get early access, exclusive videos and podcasts and more. Pro Wrestling Tees has the merch. As always, thank you for watching. For those who are too young to remember, too stupid to remember, or just smart enough to be able to erase this garbage from your mind's eye, here's the scoop. On the June 11th, 2007 edition of Monday Night Raw, it was Vince McMahon Appreciation Night. As you might imagine, the wrestlers were not appreciative. They were quite rude to the 60-something-year-old alleged <laughs> Joining in on the fun was another 60-something-year-old alleged <laughs> This one would even go on to serve as President of the United States, get impeached, and become the first man in nearly 100 years to fail in his bid to be re-elected. At the end of the episode, McMahon exits the arena through who he had hoped were his greatest supporters. Parted down the middle like Sandor's hair from Dracula's daughter, the superstars of WWE watched the CEO billionaire drift away into the night. After offering one last glance at the cold, wet, dark parking lot around him, McMahon entered the limousine, which promptly exploded him instantly. Yes, this really happened. Now, did the series finale of The Sopranos air just 24 hours before this episode of Monday Night Raw? Yes, it did. Was I under the impression that somehow, some way, accidentally were these two scripts for the show somehow swapped? Maybe. Who blew up Vince McMahon's limousine what was the payoff to this storyline because every professional wrestling angle needs a payoff right it needs a climax that we've built to right sure so that's a valid question to ask uh this fake wwe possibly storyline never got a payoff because a real wwe flash happened less than two weeks later that's not a joke. I wrote jokes for this video. That's not a joke. That really happened. So this whole thing was dropped. We never found out who wanted Vince McMahon dead. Now, is the real story, real story, out there of what WWE were planning to do with this angle? Sure, there are a few theories that claim to be accurate, but I don't care what they were going to do. I want to talk about what I would do if I had the pencil. Option number one, the FBI. Nunzio, Johnny the Bull, Big Vito, Tony Mama Luke. Were all of these guys under contract at the time? No, but like I said, I have the pencil here and I would have worked it out. Long story short, some time goes by after the explosion. We see police coming in, interviewing wrestlers, interrogating wrestlers. They're trying to get to the bottom of what happened. Eventually, the FBI, led by Nunzio, he's the mouthpiece, of course, they barge into the acting boss's office. Now, this should be Jonathan Coachman. It cannot be a family member of Vince's because they would react too emotionally. And logic is very important to me, it seems. Now, I'm going to play these characters to really immerse you in the scene, okay? This is going to be extremely believable. It's Nunzio with his goons behind him talking to the coach. Hey! We blew up the limo. We did it. Coach is stunned. You guys blew up Mr. McMahon's limousine? Yeah, that's right. Why? Why would you do that? 
because we're tired of being disrespected. We haven't had a title shot in fucking 17 years. Is it some bullshit like that. We're taking a bull by the horns, and I'm not talking about Johnny Stamboli here, capiche? You m Mr. McMahon because you wanted a title shot? Yeah. That's not gonna get you a title shot, Nunzio. You, you guys are going to jail. You're gonna spend the rest of your lives behind barbs. What do you mean? What do I mean? You killed a person. You killed him. This is live television. I'm sure the police are on their way as we speak. How do you know the Undertaker didn't do it? What? Maybe it was the Undertaker. You just confessed that it was you. There are cameras here. You guys are going to jail. And then that's it. The FBI are taken off TV. Vince McMahon is canonically dead. And none of them ever return. I keep the FBI off TV. I pay them for the full duration of their contracts. But that's it. This sticks. This is the one storyline in wrestling that is not fucked with or undone. What do you think? Option number two, Vince McMahon was murdered by Earl and Dave Hebner. Why? Because in real life, the Hebner brothers, WWE employees for nearly 20 years in a referee role and in a backstage position, were unceremoniously fired in 2005 for selling counterfeit WWE merchandise at a store that they held a minority ownership in. In this storyline, the brothers unite off screen. They gimmick Vince McMahon's car. And the week after the murder, we open up Raw with the Hebner brothers coming down the ramp. They've got no theme music, so it seems very real. You know, they get into the ring and they grab a microphone and they say, We killed Mr. McMahon for what he did to us. That WWE merchandise may have been counterfeit, but this detonator is official and fully licensed. Nobody in the crowd has any idea what's going on. Maybe five of them are even aware of the real-life Hebner Brothers firing. So this is an extremely niche audience that I'm catering to here. It'll probably fall flat. In fact, I assume it will fall flat, but that's okay. Because that extremely niche audience will eat it up. I'm going to be in the running for Booker of the Year, and our cage match ratings are going through the roof. People aren't gonna like that one. <laughs> Option number three, this is my last one. This is the main event. Festus did it, but it was an accident. Again, I realize this was almost 20 years ago, so here's a little background on the characters. Festus, who goes by Doc Gallows today, was a mentally challenged character who would snap into a rage when he heard the bell ring. I can't confirm this, but the idea might have been inspired by a 1934 Three Stooges short called Punch Drunks. Have you ever seen that? Anyway, in this angle, these southern boys, they don't come from much, you know? Look at them. Look at their gear. These guys aren't rich. These guys aren't rolling with seven-figure contracts. Jesse comes up with a plan for he and Festus. It's Mr. McMahon Appreciation Night. How can you possibly appreciate the boss more than to soup up his ride? Festus is a former mechanic, you know? For the sake of the storyline, he's a former mechanic before head injury ruined all that. Jesse, who notices the bell ringing, brings out a competitive rage in Festus in the ring, thinks that maybe he can translate that competitive rage to his partner's former gig. So Jesse brings Festus out to the parking lot, he rings the bell, and Festus goes to work. He's underneath the limo, it's all going according to plan, we hear power tools and grunts from under the car. Festus is going to make this the greatest, most impressive limousine of all time. And that's when Vince McMahon is exiting the arena. Jesse rings the bell once more, he pulls the now docile Festus out from underneath the limousine and the two watch from afar. Once that car starts and that brand new engine roars, Jesse plans to run over and say, you hear that? You hear that beautiful music? We did that. We did this for you, Mr. McMahon, because we appreciate you. But the engine doesn't roar. Jesse's smile of anticipation twists into this mask of horrified anguish. The glow of the explosion illuminates Jesse's face just in time to watch the transformation take place. Jesse is mortified. He can't even bring himself to 
put the pieces together. Not only is he technically responsible for what happened, but he's implicated his mentally challenged partner and best friend as well. The story isn't even necessarily going to focus on the death of McMahon, it's going to focus on the inner turmoil of Jesse. How does he explain this? And is Festus really at fault? He has no idea what's going on. He was used. And he's mentally challenged. Are we really going to throw a mentally challenged guy in prison for life over one little mistake? And that's it. <laughs> we, just let it we just let it play out from there. You know, you thought Eugene was tasteless? This is 2007 WWE, baby. This is as classless as it gets. That is how you book Vince McMahon's limo explosion. And that's 616 Wrestling Dan Dance. Thank you for watching. Next time, I promise even more hard hitting wrestling analysis and complaining over the excruciating minutia of every episode of every show. Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment is where you can go to support me and the channel. Hey, sign up at any level and let's hit this history of Tony Hawk's pro skater goal. What do you think? I'll see you next time.